to uh, Town of Brookfield Selectman's uh, meeting for September the 25th if you'd like to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. And with that, I look for a motion to uh, approve uh, an expense warrant for uh, MVX refunds for 912 for $347.92, an expense warrant for 912 for $2,399.62, an expense warrant for 918.18 for $78,468.26. An expense warrant for 925.18 for $110,458.56 and a payroll warrant for 925.18 for $166,492.70. You have that motion. And I'll second it. Those, uh, any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No one's opposed. Motion passes. Announcements. A reminder of the 40th annual Apple Country Fair will be held on the Brookfield Town Common from 10 to 4. Saturday, October 6th. Highlights include 70 artisan vendors, live music, children's games, baked goods, raffles, and an apple pie contest. Proceeds benefit the Brookfield Community Club, which distributes grants to uh, enrich the community life. The fair will be held outside the common, uh, will be held outside on the common, rain or shine. Volunteers are always needed to bake and help with the raffle and children's games. To volunteer, please call 508-867-9553. Again, 508-867-9553. Or sign up at the Merrick Public Library. With that, we will move to the agenda. And with that, with uh, your permission, uh, I would like to move to item five, a permit. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion that we take this out of order and start with five. And second uh, that. So those in favor of taking the uh, item number five out of order, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No. My motion passes. What we have is a license uh, for a special permit for a beer and wine license and malt beverages for the original clan box, DBA clan box, Timberley Dugas manager, license, and we'll go from there. So with that, do I have a motion to approve this uh, license? You have that motion. All right, and I second it with that, Chief or Mr. Dugas, would you like to make a comment? Um, the only thing I have, we're still working together on the, on the traffic detail um, as, as far as uh, getting motorcycles in and out. Um, and for the conversation with Tim this afternoon, one of the rides is, is coming westbound anyway, so that's not gonna be an issue. They can go in and go out. Um, but we'll be in contact with the uh, Eagles Club on Thursday, which is the larger of the rides, I believe. And uh, we'll work on how we're gonna get them across the road and then back out. Most likely what we do in this case is we just have the duty officer go down rather than having them pay for a four hour detail for 10 minutes worth of work. Exactly. You know, because it is a charity ride. Um, we certainly don't want to take money out of their pocket. As far as the security on the event, you know, I had some concerns about alcohol, motorcycle rides, but it's customary that sometimes I do stuff off certain places. Um, and, you know, I've spoken to Tim about over serving, and I don't have any concerns about over serving. There's, there's only a short time window that they're going to be there, mostly to get to eat, and, and, you know, something to eat, move on. So I don't think there's any need for any security during the event. Just getting them across the road and on the way in. Discussed. So are they going to be coming? They're going to be well, coming. West, they're, going to, coming they're going to be coming westbound. One ride's coming westbound. Okay. They're, I think they're kind of tailing, so they're coming yeah. westbound. So they'll just be able to. I'm sorry. One ride's coming eastbound. From the. From they're coming from West Brookfield, so they'll be able to just pull in. They're pretty self-sufficient, and then they'll be able to go out on their own. It's the ride, the larger the ride, I think that's coming from Spencer into town, going west. Then I'll have to have the duty officer. We're going to make arrangements to let them know when we're about 15 minutes out, and I'll send the car down there and, and help get them across. And, and everybody at your establishment is is uh, got their training up to date with regards to yes. This. Uh, my wife and I and our and Sean amongst is, uh, our three bartenders. We're all tip certified. Okay. We're all food safety certified, and okay. uh, my wife and I take our jobs very seriously. I'm sure you do. So, uh, you know, what we're just trying to accomplish here is because there's a large amount of people, um, there's two There's two things that I need to watch out for. First of all is just having too many people in a tight spot and it 
not being as enjoyable as it should be. Right, right. Um, and another is we have a 117 person maximum occupancy at the clam box. And, you don't and I don't it. want to even come close to that. Yep. So I'd love to have that roped off area up front and just myself, I'm going to be dealing with everything outside. Um, I'm just going to be doing beer and wine, no glass uh, at all outside. Um, and we're going to post signs at the end of that roped, in air, roped off area and have extra employees on making sure nobody brings alcohol where they shouldn't. So we are all hands on deck Saturday um, because we want to be successful at this. It's a good opportunity for us to have some people out of town that don't normally come and see us and get a bite of the clam box where we're donating clam fritters and chowder to these charity events to have them just come, come and get a little taste. And you know, uh, I do appreciate all his concerns and he was very concerned about over pouring and, you know, for, for me and looking at the time frame, I don't even think we'll have enough time to serve everybody one drink if we split it into two. Yep. So I really can guarantee that that will never be an issue and nobody will be overserved on our property. Great. So with that, do I have a, uh, do I have a, uh, you have a motion in a second. I have a motion in a second. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No one's opposed. Motion passes and I will sign. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for doing it the right way and working with the chief in advance because that makes it a lot easier for yeah, us to make that kind of decision. It would have been even easier if these clubs gave me a little more <laughs> Fair Honestly, enough. I was wondering, it was a little. Help me out so much with how to go about all this, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but, but that's the way it should be. Do we so. need to put anything on the second page as well? What does it say? It says board action granted. Yes, you need, someone needs to sign off on that and then I'll send it to the ABC. Keep going. Now, normally these rides usually give you a heads up that they're coming through town, but I haven't heard from either of them. If it wasn't with Tim, I wouldn't have known about it. It's great. Terrific. Do you need this? Or? Leave it way on the back. Okay, with that, let's move to item back to the regular order funding of the uh, special town meeting articles. And I saw. Mr. Gillis, yeah. come in. I saw him. There he is. Carrie? Steve, do you want to come forward? Certainly. That, that way, that this way. You've got that done. Okay. Okay. All right, so what we've learned is coming through the door tonight is that after further review, we have uh, Article 1, Bylaw uh, Commission recommend, recommended, uh, uh, well, several bylaw recommended uh, ac actions uh, are pulled from uh, Articles 1 and 2. Article 3, uh, Bylaw uh, Committee recommendations re regarding uh, driveway bond is uh, attached. So we have this, that. this is just a deal be attached. This is just a listing, but only the ones, the pulling the ones that are highlighted, one, two, four, and five, so the sticky yep. note. Yep. And then um, 16 is going on. And 16 is going on. 16 is the yep. ad void clerk stipend. Fee yeah, so it was, we had missed that, so we need to circle that back was around and that came catch to us up. Today, actually. Good. Six. Okay. So we have a 16. Oh, it's it's not on okay, so, so you need a motion to remove. Well, first of all, yep. we need to open the warrant. Yes. Okay, so let's have a motion to open the warrant. Okay, I'll make a motion that we open the, the special town meeting warrant. And I second it. And with that, uh, those in favor of opening the uh, warrant signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No one's opposed. Mm -hmm. Motion passes. So therefore, the warrant's open. And with that, um, um, we have a motion to remove one, two, four and five. Why? Uh, just back to feedback. We These are the ones at that meeting where we said with conversations town hadn't, council had, town council hadn't weighed right, in. Right. Um, no, okay, no. So yeah. Does bylaw know this? In. Does bylaw know they're coming off? Oh, yes. Who, who, absolutely. Who, okay. Very yep, well. Yeah. Yep. And, and again, what, what some of these were were temporarily placed so conversations could go on. Mm -hmm. Those conversations did take place and with that, we've had town council, we've had CIPC. I think you guys are going to have a conversation. We're, we're, we're talking with uh, John Cook on the 11th Jim, of yes. <coughs> Jim, excuse right. me, Jim, right. It, on, yeah, but so far, it's all been negative, so there's enough. Even if you guys disagree, I think it's still going to 
be uh, okay. Yeah, so just I don't know if about it, and so I just asked him to join us. Nothing more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you can have that conversation that we wanted to have relative to setting the tax rate and stuff anyway, which will be a good yes, good indeed. discussion yep. anyway. Perfect. Yep. All right. So with that, okay. Carrie. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was. She was going to drive the bus here for a second. Uh. So, <laughs> Carrie, you're going to drive the bus for us. What are your questions? Uh, no, you. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's pretty well straightforward. Okay, so it looks like we have number six, seven, eight, and ten um, for uh, looking for funding. Number nine, I skipped over because it looks like we're going to prioritize number ten. Is that accurate? I believe that was the idea. Was okay. Go first with ten, and if failing that, it would go back to nine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I have a couple of. A couple of suggestions here. We can either raise and appropriate or we can take from stabilization. Um, so if we raise and appropriate using those figures, um, I'm also adding in number 11, which is uh, the zoning enforcement. The actual dollar amount would not be $11,000. It would be $3,608. Uh, right, that's the delta. delta. That's yeah, because we would, we would be only voting the difference. Correct. Because we, in essence, yes. be revoting the line within Correct. the budget. So if we were to do either raise and appropriate or take from stabilization, you're looking at a dollar amount of sixty-six thousand nine eighty-four seventy-eight. Currently, stabilization is at nine percent of our operating budget for FY nineteen. So if you choose to take it out of stabilization, there's. Um, there is some room, but it's not. Uh, we're we're working on an upswing with stabilization, so I really wouldn't recommend that. Do you have a number um, on that? The stabilization is at seven hundred two, nine hundred nine point five zero. Seven hundred two two nine zero nine zero nine nine zero nine. Thank you. Point five zero. Point five zero. <clears throat> Um, just for your reference, uh, so if we were to raise and appropriate that on top of our actual budget, it's 66, again, 66,984,78. Uh, last year, for instance, we raised and appropriated 161,715,85. So this is more, less than half of what, of what we, we raised year. and appropriated last year. I think we're in good, good shape with the tax rate. Um, so that if we were to raise an appropriate, it wouldn't really affect uh, our rate um, in a negative way. No. Um, and I, just for your reference, as far as that's concerned too, I did a little bit of digging and it looks like our, um, our operating budget in total went down for um, FY19 because of some, some uh, free cash was, was used and um, some of the departments actually went down. I believe the school budget went down slightly. Terrific. So we're still in line for a good solid budget. Um, we're nowhere near the levy, correct? No, nowhere near. So with it, it would be your recommendation that we raise an appropriate 66 uh, I don't think it's unfair. 66,000. Yeah, if, if, the, if the <clears throat> town people want these things, uh, for our town, then that that would be the way to go. Yeah. Right. And so our recommendation to the advisory would be that, again, if we agree, um, that we'd we'd look to raise and appropriate that that amount of money and move on. Right. And I'm I'm also I'm a little unclear. Um, this is this is will impact the fiscal year 2019 budget. You raise and appropriate. That, that's where it's going to. Got Correct. It. Correct. Okay. Very well. Yep. Something real quick. Um, of course Are you looking for the figures on the tax rate last year? Uh, no, actually, I was looking for something else that I don't think I'm going to be able to get into right now. But I, I'd be happy to have the figures on the tax rate from last year. In fiscal 18, there are the like, figures do, there. Yeah, because one of the things I was going to say is that if you were advising to take it, any of it from stabilization, none of the salary stuff should come out of stabilization because that's operational budget stuff. Correct. So, um, but that's so, negating $3,608. Yeah. It's not. Right. Um, so... 
Okay, so you're basing the 161.7, the 161 from last year was based off right, of... Right, that was the uh, snow and ice deficit yep. and other deficits for other departments. Okay. Now the general fund deficits, those were, um, those were, aren't those normally handled through the adjustments to the municipal transfers? So they that are. includes that? Yes. Okay, so that includes that funding. Yep. Right. No, in fiscal 18, there were no, um, there were some municipal transfers, but because of all of the um, audit work that we did, there were deficits in other areas. So Okay, so that's actually related to the, to the uh, write-downs from the audit? Um, some of it, yes. It's, it, it is some departments went over in their budgets and the municipal transfers were not turned in. Was that ever... Um uh, delineated in a in a like broken out in any type of a report from that audit. Uh, no, not yet. But the the audit is not final, so we don't have the final final report. Um, but when are we expecting that? Oh gosh, hopefully soon. Do we have a promise date from the vendor regarding when we're going to get that? No, it's all driven by myself and the treasury department. Okay. Do you have a promise date from yourself in the Treasury Department? Well, I'm that? still on, on track to do <coughs> Schedule A for 1031, yeah. so. <coughs> That's um, the, that was the key okay. benchmark. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there an, any other type of um, meeting this week to reconcile the, exactly where we think we are vis-a-vis -vis the levy limit this week between the advisory and Treasury? No. Is there any follow-up to last week's meeting? No. Okay. I, I, we were well under the levy limit, over 300000 So to raise and appropriate $66,000 would be right. and, yeah. very, very reasonable. I, I, question. If I recall, mm -hmm. 6, 7, 8, and 10, mm -hmm. we're all on the were all articles on the annual town meeting in June, correct? Correct. Um, and so the question at that point was, do we raise appropriate? Do we use free cash? Do we take from stabilization, correct? correct. Um, it seems to me we were purposely rather conservative with free cash. We did not want to touch stabilization and um, and we were rather conservative with our free cash. I remember being, you know, certainly our committee and, and others feeling, okay, let's, let's, let's hold this off, special town meeting, yep. that sort of thing, okay? Um, I would advocate taking this from stabilization, and, um, and I think it warrants it. I agree with number 11, that's a, that's a salary issue that should, that should be raised and appropriate. Um, and um, we, this is not a big number for, uh, probably incorrectly said, um, it, it's, if this was June at the annual town meeting and, and we, were, we were in, in, the, in the position we're in now, we would probably use free cash to pay for these things. I'd like to advise that we do that. Well, we can't use free cash. There is no more. Correct. Um, so in June, we could have used free cash. What I would, what yeah, I would suggest. And I think what he's saying is that the money that was free cash in June is now sitting. In it is stabilization. That, 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 that's exactly the, my the, point. The, the dollars. What he's saying is that had we addressed these issues in June, we, we, probably, we would have taken it from free cash. That money's currently sitting in stabilization, and rather than rolling what in essence is a, a June bill forward and paying it out of this year's monies. Um, and you know we don't have to decide this tonight. No, 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 no. Right. Okay. Right. Um, I think it's, ideas. but I think it's a good discussion, right? So. Yep. Um, now, one of the things that that I would appreciate is, um, I would like, uh, and it doesn't have to be tonight, um, and and we can get together um, either one on one if you're okay offline, with it sure. offline. Yep. Um, I'd like to walk through. Um, what we're basing our where we think we are to the levy limit off of, mm -hmm. um, Good. and just and just ensure that everybody is aligned on what our numbers are. 
Okay, I feel it's very important walking into this next town meeting, yep. and I want to make certain that everybody has a comfort level with mm -hmm. it. Yep. Um, so, but it sounds like your advice is to go raise an appropriate from this fiscal year. Yours is to take it out of stabilization because we're looking at the dollars that would have been free cash, how we would have used one customary Section. way of dealing yeah. with it. Yeah. Now, weren't these articles removed? They were passed over? They were passed yeah. over. Okay. Yeah. So, not yeah. so much removed as passed over because we were kind of playing it. Tight to the vest. Yeah, tight to the vest. Okay. And, yeah, and, 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 and just trying to be safe since smart. we were still yeah. waiting. It was the right know. thing to do at the right time. Right. And, and but if we are in, if, if we are feeling the way we're feeling tonight on June 15th. Who would have done it? We, well, it would have been certainly um, much more viable and, and probable. Right. shall we say and right. and i just i you know why why do you have a savings account it's for these types of things okay and um you know or free cash if you will so so, so steve you're having a meeting on the 11th, 11th and so that we ought to you ought to circle the wagons for the 11th yes and and i, I agree with beth I, I would like to walk into that meeting on the 11th with the levy limit conversation <clears throat> offline, so to speak, between us, whomever, so that I'm walking into m the advisory meeting with a clear sense of what that is and right. our options. Yeah, so that's we have, smart. We have a solid stabilization number, which is good. Yep. Um, I just calculated if we were to take that amount out of stabilization, it would bring our, our uh, percentage down to 7.8 uh, in stabilization. Okay. My, my only concern with um, I'm fine either way because either way it's coming out of the town coffers. But um, with the capital improvement plan in place, um, we're, we're, we're trying to save for the future and we're talking about um, we need to get in excess of. Um, um, I wanted to pull up the capital plan because there's a certain percentage that I know capital improvement has been recommending that right. we pay as we go. Yep. And and the, right. and that's the that's the one thing that this would fall into is that yep. is this stuff that is currently in their plan as pay as we go or is this currently in the plan as a sort of thing that we fund from from free cash? Although actually the way that their plan's written, you can fund pay as you go either from free cash or raising. You're talking rate. capital. Well, yeah. one of the things they have a minimum of five grand on anything. Right. So. Right. Right. That so, would, so the safety equipment and actually the probably the other thing on this item, if we were going to split it out. The other thing at, on this item that absolutely ought to come out of raise and appropriate is the safety equipment because it's. I do agree that should have been on the on the budget because that should have just been on the operational budget. I don't understand why the tree work was not on the was so not tree, as part of the a, operating a, a, budget. A large chunk like that, uh, above and beyond what's usual and customary for tree warden, you can go either direction. So the question is, and actually the question to ask ourselves about number six is do we think because of the amount of tree work that we currently have accumulated in the town that we're going to look at doing twenty thousand dollars a year for the next say three years or is this a one-year bump in order to address a backlog so if it's a one-year bump in order to address a backlog then i would say taking it out of stabilization would be appropriate or from free cash if we had had if we were in a yep. meeting that we had free cash if this is going to be a, a long-term commitment then I would feel pretty strongly that it needs to come from raising appropriate. I agree. Because so. then it would become a budgetary item annually. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Then we probably need to bump it anyway. Right. Just yeah. with the white oak stuff that we're going to have to deal with. dead trees everywhere is yeah. mind boggling. Yeah. 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 No, we were doing so, about 100 trees a year. Yeah. And, then, and we were definitely so, going to have to bump so that up. On those three items, I'm kind of leaning towards raising appropriate versus something like the generator. And funding the fleet account, I think, is would be appropriately from stabilization. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the not to play, you know, both sides of the fence, but from a standpoint of the actual intent of those different right. buckets of money. If you look at it from that perspective, yes, I would agree. I I would say that six, seven, and uh, eleven would be definite raise and appropriated if you if you look at it that way. Okay. Um, and then we could we could ask for. Um, stabilization on the transfer to the fleet account and the generator okay. that makes sense yeah so 
And, and like you said, I mean, depending on how far off we are from the raise and appropriate, and, and depending on where we were planning on funding that anyway, it, it may be appropriate to take it from raise and appropriate. I'm not saying it's not, but I'm just saying at a very minimum, that's that's the direction I would go, just from the standpoint of how we typically bucket our money. Um, I do have a question on number five, because I, I don't see that there's any sort of restriction of funding a line before we've decided what a line is going to go to because we have historically done that with other salary lines where we have uh, funded a salary line before there was any any firm obligation um, to actually do that. So um, I guess the um, comment was made that he's at a, a, a percentage, there's a percentage difference that's yeah. average. So, so, so what is that percentage so, so, average? So there's a usual customary that there's and it depends on who you talk to. Um, some people will say 15% between um, the sergeant and or the lieutenant and, and whoever the chief is. Some people will say it's 12. Um, certainly, you can't find anything in the state of Massachusetts that's less than 10. Well, um, and but there's no there's no rule to it. It's more of a usual and customary. So um, my take on it was. Um, similar to the approach we've used with some other positions, is ask the town to fund it first, and then and then we can we know what we have from the standpoint of negotiations instead of trying to negotiate a contract, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and then wind up with a mismatch between what we have in the funding and and what have you. So um, I was looking at, at in essence, you can do it either way. What are his con what is his contract term date? Uh, it started a year ago, actually. We're in this. We're at the beginning of the second year of his contract. Okay. So he has one more year. Yep. Okay. So here's the research that I've done. Currently, um, chief is eight point two five percent higher than his uh, sergeant. Yep. Um, on another um, note, it is not uncommon for your sergeant or lieutenant to make more money. Um, than the chief based on well, they will duties. With, they will with overtime. Well, and, 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 and some of the other potential items within the contract. But generally, the base salary does have more gap to begin with. And again, I did do some research, and there was a study done um, that I asked about, and the, uh, the 8, eight to 10% is, is the average in the state of Massachusetts right now. Um, so, you want to send me that study? That would be great. Because I will not, try to get not what the industry standard is. Well, um, and it depends on and it depends on whether you're talking base or whether you're talking about all the incentives. I'm talking well. base. Okay. Uh, he at base right now he is eight point two five percent higher than his lieutenant um, or sergeant. Sergeant. Right. Sergeant. Yeah. Um, so what? Uh, again, this is something that. You need to take offline anyway, so if Carrie, if you could provide that document to yep. Beth, I'll have awesome. to. I'll have to find it again. Yep, and then that's something we need to be doing. And again, that, that's more between now and the eleventh as well, right? Yeah. 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 <coughs> yeah. Um, <Your> <coughs> uh, maybe I miss crossed something out. I I was thought this was off. No, five is not being well, we crossed just, off. Well, we're discussing. Well, we're discussing. <coughs> so we haven't, made, we, haven't, we haven't made the motion yet to take oh, those off. Okay. I don't no, think. No, I, I believe you're right. So. Um, <clears throat> well, I, for some reason, I just thought we had talked about this. And, and we had. I mean. We talked about it months ago. Yeah, months okay. Ago. And yeah. time to pull the trigger. Okay. We're getting close to pulling the trigger. So in other words, when we talked about we talked about doing this, for yeah. some reason, I thought it was sort of moot. I thought it was his. It, it was more of a contract thing, and so that was so dead. It, so so. Here's the challenge, right? It's a case of doing. You know, what's legal, what's moral, what's right. Okay. Legally, we are under no obligation since we signed a contract with the chief a year and some change ago to revisit his pay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The reality is. That okay, so so this year he's eight percent. I think next year he's going to lose some more ground. Okay, um, so so you start down a slippery slope. We don't pay well even for our officers and sergeants compared to the statewide averages. Okay, 
So you're talking somebody who's, who's barely got that gap against what's already a lower base to begin with. Okay, we managed to, in this last contract for the officers and the sergeant, at least not allow them to lose any more ground relative to what the opportunities are in their field statewide, but we certainly didn't necessarily gain any ground against what the what's usual and customary in the surrounding areas. Okay. okay. Yep. So what I, I what I don't want to have happen is for the chief to lose even more ground relative to what his workforce is against what the market is. Okay. Because I think three years. Exactly. Uh, over the course of the three years. Exactly. So if we don't do some adjustment now um, then, then we're really doing a disservice to them based on what I understand of the market information that I have that's, that's much more peculiar to the surrounding towns. Was the chief's position included in the study for the Collin Center? Um, I don't know. I wouldn't think so. I don't think it was because they're, because they're contract positions. Right. Do you know? I, I don't know that we get no. a personnel board, but I'm thinking, I don't know. I, I don't think the police were included because yeah. they're under individual contracts. Well, so, so what you're saying is six thousand dollars doesn't necessarily give him a six thousand dollar raise, it, it, but it's money there to work it's, with. There's money to work with, so Got that it. we could we yep. could go into contract okay. negotiations Understood. knowing that we're not going to overspend the budget line. Very well. Yep. So. Yep. And again, that would be something between now and the eleventh to kind of nail down. Yeah. As far as direction, and okay. carry yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to figure out if you're going to open negotiation co contract negotiations with him again. Right. Are you going to leave it until his term? Uh, well, well, the the intent yeah. would be is that if the town approves the money, that we would we'll we would by mutual accord re-enter negotiations. Yeah. I mean, that's what the intent is. Okay. And has anybody checked with town council on this item? Uh, the only thing that I've checked is that we can at any time re-enter negotiations, but I haven't checked necessarily specific to the article. Okay. So my my only concern would be the was he included in the Collins Center study? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And um, let's find out the uh, state averages. Yeah, and if you've based on our demographics, <clears throat> that's got some information. You may have might have some additional information. Yeah and look to have that back and forth Sounds in the plan. next couple of weeks. So with that, I think what we have to do is vote that we've taken one, two, four, and five off. We've added 16 and the other so, thing that- So actually I'd like to, I don't want to take five off I'm yet. sorry. So I, oh, and I'm you sorry. don't have a motion yet for any of it. No, but let's um, start so, working on it. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I'm happy to give you a motion for one, two, um, and four to come off. Yep. All right. And to add 16. Um, 16. Right. And we're going to work towards the 11th to firm and, up yeah, our and, position. And and work towards on the 11th to firm up our position on, uh, on raise five. an appropriate or stabilization or a mix of both. Right. And and the key is is just to make sure the verbiage allows us to make those those decisions if we need to if we need to shift anything based on yep. additional information. So. Good. Yes, town council will get a draft of the, of the articles anyway. Okay. So they can look it All right. So we have that motion in front of us. Karen, you're good with the motion? Yep. Motion to, um, to take off one, two, four, and to add 16. Right. And there will be discussions between now and the 11th. And well, just to firm up our strategy. And if I look here, just so. We've got you guys in front of us. If I what, you have to finish the vote. set meeting dates, which were 12. So I don't think you really ever finished that vote, did you? We're, no, we didn't. Okay. No. And what I'm what I'm doing is so uh, you have we have a meeting on the 23rd, which would then drive October 23rd, which would that or the recommendation is a meeting on October 23rd of this body, and that <clears throat> that would put us in position to have the meeting on November 9th, a pre-meeting prior to the town meeting on the 9th. Okay. So it actually gives us two two meetings. If well, we that meeting on the 9th is the one that you have just, yeah. you know, minutes before the special town meeting you have right. at the school. Okay. But what, what it does, back, back to your recommendation, Karen, it, we have, if the meeting's on the 11th of October, we have the 23rd and November 6th yeah. to make any adjustments if we have to. Okay. And we'll vote this later. To the motions, yeah. Okay. Okay. Makes sense? Yep. 
All right. So you have a you have a motion. So those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No one's opposed. Motion passes. Good. There's one Thank more you. item on the um, number twelve. Ooh. Yep. Uh, the, I believe the discussion that we had um, with regards to this <coughs> is that the um, best way to handle this would be to borrow. Yes. yes. So we're all in agreement on that. Everybody's okay. in concurrence yeah. on Perfect. that. Yep. Especially capital improvement. I know that they were yes. totally on board with that. Yeah. That needs to be borrowed and we need to try to align it with the police station. Right, yes. And, so the, we're and the chief's on board with our trying board. to, to uh, um, align the purchase in such a way so that he catches whatever cycle we need him to right. on, the, on the police station so that we can get the best possible funding and not have the extra origination fee in the right. whole nine yards. Right. So, Perfect. good. Awesome. Anything else going on in the accountant's office? Other than That's a silly things. question. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that you need our, 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 our input, support, or, or action on? Nope, all set. Right, so we got that. Um, let's see where we're close, close Oh, yeah. Oh. Motion, motion to close the warrant. You have that motion? Yeah, and second. And any further discussion on that? Seeing none, those in favor of closing the warrant signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No one's opposed. Motion passes and we'll move it on. Sorry about that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming, Oh, Steve. oh absolutely. You're very good. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for it. I'm going to steal the gold with that. Yep. That's yours. Aye. Put this back in here so we don't lose it. All right, so we've done that, so we'll close that. So then it's fleet repair. Fleet okay, we need to t just talk and, and actually, Carrie, I don't know if you want to stay for this or not. Mm. Fleet repair replacement account. Um, one of the things that has almost gotten like lost in the, the kind of like history and back and forth of, of, of the, uh, um, town finances is like what the role and purpose of fleet repair replacement mm -hmm. account is um, and and how the intent was for it to be used hey I don't know if you guys want to stay for this discussion or not it's it's like a little bit of a history lesson and a little bit of discussion and actually I'd be happy to have any input from from you all um, so, if you're aware of it so, go so ahead. just my thought is okay. that because Linda's not here tonight okay I think what we'll do we should is, table it I think we should table it but if there's a thought before these two people leave the, get that the, the most the most important thing I need to understand um, predominantly from Carrie but I want Steve to be aware as well is that um, conceptually what happened was that under our former accountant is that when we went to having a fleet repair replacement account, we started funneling all of our new vehicle purchases through that account, which was not the original intent of the account, okay? The original intent was if we had a new vehicle purchase, that vehicle purchase would have its own article vote, it would have its own account, the funds would get paid out of that account. If there was any residual, we would decide at the next town meeting what to do with the residual and sweep the accounts. Um, because of that, we got into a tendency of not actively, and this is more to Steve, not actively funding the fleet repair replacement account, because what we did instead was just accumulate the, call it the tailings for all intents and purposes. And then if we needed used equipment or we had a great idea to use it, then we try to take it to the town meeting or, or go ahead and make the purchase. Mm -hmm. The intent of this account is supposed to be to be available for like major repairs so that we don't have to guess what's going to break next, right? So sure. transmissions die, engines die, paint peels, whatever, yeah. right? Um, and also to have a certain amount of funds available that if there's like some relatively small piece of used equipment that comes on the market that we want to be nimble enough to acquire because we have a particular purpose that we're going to say we trust enough in the Board of Selectmen, the Advisory Committee, and the Capital Improvement Committee that if we route it through all three entities and they decide that yes indeed we want to go buy this used whatever lawnmower, okay, that we can just go do that without taking it to town meeting, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and so it's it's twofold. It's to take the pressure off the, the departments to guess if they're going to have a major repair and it's to 
give us a certain amount of nimbleness as a small town to be able to go buy used equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay, the goal in putting like that fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to fund the fleet account would be to have that capability to do that. Whether we have some ideas about exactly what it's going to go to or not. Okay. Um, but to get out of the habit of putting new vehicle money through that account and, and doing the tailings thing, okay? Is everybody in concurrence about that that's the intent of that account? I, I saw a lot of North-South coming from Cary, so I'm assuming um, that, I yes, just, that's your understanding. When I came on board, um, that's what that account had been used like for a couple of years already. Yeah. It had been, they had funneled all new vehicle purchases into that account. Yeah. Um, so I just followed suit. Right. Um, since we've discussed it, though, I did do some research and found that, yes, in the past, the purchases had their own accounts. Yes. So those accounts are still available. Okay. Um, it's not a lot of work for me to move the funds to these places. Right. Um, and put the money where, oh, to each individual uh, vote. That, that I don't have a problem with. Okay. I just need direction. Okay, fair own. enough. So, you, so, so however we want to handle it, then you're yeah. fine with it. Yeah, sure. uh, it was not clear to me um, Again, when I started, the purpose of that, right. and uh, there wasn't a lot of information on it readily available. So, um, I, again, I just followed suit, but they are there. So, if um, if you if need you to use them in the future, then that's fine. Yeah. Okay. And we ought to somehow back to the process procedure stuff that we're working on mm -hmm. to add that note because that's a good note to give that background a place yep. so people have it for the future. Yep. And again, I'd circle back to the eleventh meeting that you're going to have. To get concurrence from advisory, yeah. so that we can yeah. document it and move on. Well, you know, one thing occurs to me is, you know, I've only seen, <clears throat> I've seen enough his, only enough history knows that like that account to me has been funded by like FEMA reimbursements and stuff like yeah. that. Oh yeah. And, and and what you're saying is that is appropriate. So it, it's, it's, or is that what you're saying? So it, it, it could be considered, well, the, and that's, <clears throat> that's the more policy decision piece that is the discussion for you and for your committee, okay? Mm -hmm. um, although the selectmen probably need to weigh in on that as well, right? Sure. right? Is that, so what happened is in the absence of guidance from the selectmen, the department's head said, well, what's a reasonable way to fund this account and, and to make townspeople understand why we think that this money should go back to taking care of our equipment okay mm -hmm. so so the department heads right wrong or indifferent said in the absence of guidance i'm going to come up with something that 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 i can defend to a townsperson who says mm -hmm. what are you doing to to make sure my taxes aren't going up and up and up but that i'm getting the services that i need so highway started saying well you know if we're bringing this money back in well let's use that to fund the fleet repair replacement account and i think that's a discussion for a night when linda's here mm -hmm. for us to as a board say is that how we want to fund it do we want to basically use it as a way to recycle funds that it, to encourage department heads to dispose of you know used and, and battered equipment and get junk out of the parking lot, right? Mm -hmm. And okay, let's turn that into cash that we know if the transmission blows up on something next week or if we want to get some other piece of equipment that's that's an, a nominal cost that we've then funded it without putting an undue burden on the taxpayer, right? right. Or do we just say, you know what? Every year, in order to ensure that we have the money we need to in order to take properly take care of our fleet, we're going to take a look at all of our, our maintenance costs that that don't wind up getting covered under something like snow and ice and figure, hey, at a minimum, we have $13,000 a year in repairs that go on all this 30-year-old equipment that we have. Oh, we, we have this wish list of equipment that would cost us $200,000, but that we might could pick up for 18 if, if we find it on the right sale. Okay, we're gonna fund this at, you know, Fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, depending on what's residual left in the account, or ten thousand dollars, depending on what residual is left in the account, so that we have the room to do these things if the opportunity comes up or if the need arises. Right? And then, when the FEMA money is reimbursed, that goes into the in the general fund. General fund, right? right. right. But right. but in the absence of of us and us yep. making the decision to fund it, yep. it wasn't a bad way sure. to at least yep. throw some money in the bucket. Got it. So, and again, back to that specific FEMA money, 
we did tear up the machines to yep. do the work. Exactly. So, so in defense of the decision that was made, it was a good decision, a reasonable decision. Yep. And I think we're, we're, we're headed, again, back to your meeting of the 11th and kind of circling the wagons with this board on the 9th, is it's just very similar to the strategy around raising appropriate and stabilization. Yep. There's not one answer. It mm -hmm. wants to be mm -hmm. two answers, and we, what we want to do is get that guideline in writing so that it, the next time, it's more right. we're educated. Right, yeah. right. because cause, cause, what, the, what are the guidelines? Right, so so the CIPC would like to see us just say, you know what, we need to come up with some level that we want to keep the, the fleet repair replacement account and, and a funding methodology, and that's great. Um, if if there's you know significant organizational resistance to that from advisory, then we're going to have to come together and, and come to come some, to some decisions around it. And then we can make the decision, you know what, if we'd rather do kind of a pay as we go, then we just support Article 10 with highways scheme to, to keep some money flowing back in there. And if, uh, if we want to give a, a more holistic guidance and guidelines, then we just fund to that level. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. Cool, so I'm gonna recommend that we table fleet repair uh, replace account for discussion for October 9th. Sounds great. And and I'll so second you that. have that motion. You okay? You second it. And then with that, those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And I. Anybody opposed? Almost opposed. And thanks for passes. saying. I apologize. Yeah. Great. So. Thanks. And I didn't see it, so yeah. I was looking for the folder. Yeah. So, there you go. so there was no folder. And there was no folder, was so no I was folder. confused. Yeah. So there you go. we have uh, we've taken care of the special permit under five. Yeah. And now we have multiple position yeah. requests. And that uh, I hereby, I'm looking for a motion to that I hereby request that the Board of Selectmen approve an exempt, <coughs> exemption under um, paragraph 20 to allow me to hold, and this is done on the floor, to be able to hold the positions of paramedic, EMC, uh, EMS chief, and firefighter. Okay, I'll give you that motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion on it? No? Those in favor of the motion okay. signify by saying aye. 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 Oh. Yep, go ahead. And anybody opposed? No one's opposed. So um, I should have said this during the discussion piece. Um, I think Mike Siri is reaching out to um, Donnie Berthiun and Ann Gobi about the fact that um, the 2020 census could hurt a lot of small towns. If we go over 3,500, this won't be possible anymore. Ooh. And uh, there's a lot of other small towns that are in the same situation. Wow. And um, we have a lot of people in this town that do a lot of things and, sure. and trying to get the level of engagement to get away from that um, is going to be expensive. Sure. So we may want to encourage them to perhaps move that bar to perhaps 5,000 instead of 3,500. Um, and then the other piece of it is if we fail in that endeavor with the state, we are going to ha need some really significant heavy lifting either from the personnel committee or we might need to enlist the Collins Center again and see if we can chase some grant money for it in order to write up job positions that encompass some of these multiple positions. Now you can't solve all of that, but you could solve like Donna's problem with a properly written job description that allows for yeah. basically all of those positions because you could have a EMS Chief 2 that is defined as having additional duties doing paramedic and firefighter work, right? You could have a fire chief too that has fire chief with paramedic as an additional duty. So we can solve some of it through creative rating. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise, <laughs> but, uh, but other ones like cash flow. Uh, other ones like like uh, town clerk and board of health. Right, that that might not be doable. That's not gonna fly. Right, that's not gonna fly. So yeah, that's that's so. a good good heads up. Yeah. Thanks, Beth. Yep. All right, moving on. Uh, so that takes care of that. We have a sign a contract for ADA. So what we have is uh, that uh, the Center of Living and Work uh, and the ADA. This was to extend the deadline, deadline to. Uh, to enable them to finish their work. So I need a motion to enable them to extend the contract to November 15th so that they can finish up their ADA evaluation. Um, I'll give you that motion. And I'll second it for can discussion. Just a quick discussion. What was their original date? Uh, October something. I don't know exactly what the date was, but they're still working on it. OK. 
And they do have all the surveys and they have yeah. all the information. I mean, we, we, we need it, so I'm going to say yes, yeah. but I'm, uh, they weren't horribly um, responsive when we were trying to at least get some information for, for some other purposes. So it may be something to consider next time we have the opportunity to award a contract. Yep. All right. So we've done that one. All right. So then we're going to move on to sign Leonard Engineering invoice. So we have this is the this is fifteen post. No, isn't that? You oh no. The I, no, I have CMRPC. So this is okay. The sign Leonard it's Leonard Engineering folders. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is Leonard yeah. Engineering. Andrew yeah. Lowe's recommendation of paying thirty-nine. I'm sorry, three thousand fifty-two dollars and eighty-one cents for Leonard Engineering to finish up the work. The Hayden Hyde yep. Draper and all that. Right. Yep. So, do I have a motion to pay you Leonard the three thousand fifty-two dollars and eighty-one cents? I, I second it. Any other discussion on that? No discussion. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody appro uh, opposed? No one's opposed, and so do you want me to sign this one as well, Karen? Yes, yeah. And two weeks ago you signed one also, but this is a, another invoice. Yeah, so you but know. this is the, the, I think the, from Leonard, it's the last one. Okay, now it's, now it's a vote to award the, back to, uh, still under that CM, uh, RPC. CMRPC activity. This is a vote to award 15 post oak environmental site assessment project uh, for engineering to Beta Group of Norwood, Mass. I'll give you that motion. I'll second it. And what this does is it allows us to better understand the costs for environmental cleanup for 15 post oak under the CBG DG funding. So, any other discussion? Uh, seeing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No one's opposed. Motion passes. Do you want me to sign this one as well, Karen? Yes. Yep. With this, we need a motion to uh, accept a proposal, and I have to read this because this is how it needs to go in the minutes. This proposal will be accepted in full upon receipt of all necessary permits and requested variances. And this again is the uh, uh, the ability to move forward with the incline chairlift proposal. I will give you that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion on that? Seeing none, those in favor of the Going forward with the chairlift, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No one's opposed. Motion passes. They've been doing some good work on the Town Hall Improvement Committee. Yes, they have. Slow but sure. Steady wins the race. <laughs> there you go. All right. And so with that, <clears throat> we have an appointment. We have, we're looking for Al Jones to join as a water commissioner. Do I have that motion? You have that motion. And I have a second. Any further discussion on that? Seeing none, those in favor of Al Jones being appointed a, a water commissioner until uh, June of next year, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No, no one's opposed. Motion passes. And I do have a question though for the term, I'm sorry. Um, wouldn't that just be until the end of the next election, to, to the, May 5th? Uh, I'm sorry, the election. You're correct. It is, it what's the, what's the date of the election? I, I, it's now it's in May, but... Anybody got I'll a calendar for this weekend? Well, I'll, 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 I'll go, go ahead, ahead and mention it. Right. I'm so used to doing that 30th. Yep, and I was... Okay, so I'm going to amend my motion to read. Let's figure out what day it is. So it's the first Saturday, right? So that's uh, it. it would be the it would actually be the Wednesday, uh, the first or the first Tuesday. First Tuesday is the seventh. Yeah. 
So I'll retype it and come by. Or actually, it's Monday. We always have. It's always a Monday, so it'd be the sixth. Six. May six, nineteen. Well, I'll just put a single line and initial. Okay. Yeah. That's and that's fine. for legal purposes. Okay. That's fine. Right. Okay. Here we go. Cool. Thanks, Bill. Good Welcome. catch. Yes. Every once in a while. Thank you. All right. So now for meeting future meetings, these are the following recommendations. So. I could have a motion to uh, set meetings of October 9th and October 23rd, November 6th and no November 9th. The November 9th is the one that we do pre-town pre meeting, November 20th and December 4th. You have that motion. Second. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No one's opposed. So that is the meeting schedule. November 9th. I might not be here for town meeting. Do you mind reading October again? October 9th, what? 9 and 23. Okay. Right. And that's the... Tuesday nights, right? Yeah, and Steve, for you, 23rd is important, so we can have a follow-on discussion. Okay. okay. Actually, I will be here, but I'll be coming up. Jet-lagged. So, um, we didn't need a... Uh, I'm going to move on to the next under other. Uh, we didn't need a vote on that picture, right? We were just doing. No, you just, they just want from me, just wants permission. So what, what we have is uh, in the town hall cleanup, we found a picture from 1919 of numbers of folks from the Yankee division from Brookfield uh, at Fort Devens. And so uh, Don Taft was in t contact with National Guard and the National Guard would love to have it as a part of their museum. And so it's, if no objections, it's moving to Lowell and the, uh, I'm sorry, to Concord uh, and the National, uh, Massachusetts National Guard Museum. I mean, you can take a vote if you want to make it formal. You want to do so, it? So I'll, I'll give you that motion, and, but I do want to, just a tiny bit of discussion. Okay, yeah. motion to uh, send it to the National Guard. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I second it. Great. Um, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd just like to see that we get a real high quality digital scan of it and have it available to the library Ooh. before we send it. Uh, because it's, there may there yeah, may be there like may this. be oh is yeah, it, 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 yeah. it's a panel. Can we can we find out how much it would be to scan it? Yeah, we can find out, but I'm wondering, um I mean we wouldn't be able to do it in house. We no, have to, we'd have to send it to somebody. Yeah. So okay. just let's just just find out how much it would be because uh it's good that they would preserve it. Um I would just like it available because it is it sounds like it was townspeople that was part of that and I wouldn't doubt that some of their descendants are probably still in town or might at some point be doing some research. And some of those guys, no. 1919. Okay, okay so they're all back. Yeah. Okay. Yep, good. So. Yeah. All right. So I've, I've left a note here. Karen, I put a note there for yep. Don to look at that. Yeah, me too. I all right. So now we look to the uh, general public for interest in some. Uh, Supporting an advisory committee of WRTA. This is a separate position from um, the current advisory representative. Rep, town representative that Rudy's covering. Yep. This is a separate and distinct uh, advisory board meeting, uh, board, uh, advisory board position. So if anybody out there is interested in WRTA and interested in an appointment to uh, uh, the town's position uh, on their advisory board, we'd much appreciate hearing from you. And so that's that. And then Sharon was kind enough to put together a public notice on the uh, cable access and their efforts to put things back in service. So that's available. Any other other? Seeing none. We will, oh, that was correspondence. So then with that, we need to move into executive session to discuss strategy with regard to collective bargaining and litigation, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on bargaining or litigation positions of the public body, and the chair so declares. So do I have a motion to move into executive session? You have that motion to move into executive session under exception three. And so that's a second. So it's uh, those in favor, signify by saying aye. Coughlin aye. Snyder aye. So with that, I would suggest that we're going to have a motion to, re uh, to re reconvene this meeting for uh, adjournment only. Yeah.